Hi guys, DCT Makes here. I thought I'd do uh, a roundup of all of the problems that um, over five years that the Predator 670 uh, that I've witnessed, seen, fixed, got past. Um, it's a it's a litany. Uh, <laughs> okay, first problems. Straight out of the box, a lot of people say, hey, this thing won't run, won't draw fuel, um, won't idle properly, won't do this, won't do that, coughs, sputters, whatever. Now, normally there's a, and I've got a bunch of videos out there that a lot of you guys have probably seen, but um, there's a exhaust that has a short a long side and a short side and exits over here the normal exhaust the carburetor comes straight from Harbor Freight with a 108 and a 105 jet this is the first issue what everybody does is a couple of things when they're messing about they take the exhausts off and put straights on it They'll put electric fuel pumps on them. Um, they'll change the stock pulse pump. Or they'll make some terrifying mistakes like I did in the first place, which was to put an electric fuel pump from a dirty fuel source, kind of, the original tank for this particular piece of equipment. But nevertheless, a filtered electric pump over on... And I didn't, don't know why, stupid, didn't bypass the diaphragm pump. And that, even two and a half pounds to four pounds fuel pump, I'll eventually mess up the diaphragm pump. So, what do you do? You take off the exhaust, you put straight pipes on it. Immediately, you have a problem. 108 jet and a one. 05 jet because the original exhaust had a long side to evacuate and a short side when they were testing it they must in supposition they must have had a lean a lean burn on it when the jets were equal so there's a video i've got out there predator jets fixing the jets make them equal 105 seems to be the best one from all the people that have we've talked to you know we've talked with 105 seems to be the best evens out depends how uh, what elevation you live at sea level normal sea level up to like i don't know 1500 feet above sea level the 105s when you put the 105s in equal length exhaust you even out the idle and you even out all the way up through the rev range and that's not supposition, it's, we, we did it. Okay, so the other thing is, I changed this carburetor, as you notice the fuel comes in on the same side as the venting side, whereas normally on the 22 horse carb, it comes in from this side. This is a, this is a clone, I don't know, GX670, a whole bunch of different engines, 24 horsepower carb, but I bought that because I couldn't get the stock one to run, but I did that prior to understanding the jets and blah, blah, blah. Okay, so here's, here's kind of the litany of things I did to try and fix things and didn't really need to. Um, thought we had a spark problem. Changed the coils out. One of the coils was low on, on, the, low wind, on the lower winding, um, but probably not enough to stop the spark properly kind of stop the spark um, but changed them out they're relatively cheap plugs why did we change the coils out well what we were getting was even after we changed the electric fuel pump out and took the diaphragm out of the out of the loop put it directly in we were getting way way too much fuel but it doesn't look like you're getting way too much fuel it acts like it's actually starving even though the end result is, this will sound really weird, the end result was the plugs getting wet, 
but the implication is, well, there's fuel, it's not firing. And then in some one of my other earlier videos, I had this odd scenario, and that could have been the coil where it would fire over here on this side. It wouldn't fire on this side. Move the plug over here, it would fire. Really weird. Did a leak down test on this side. Perfect. Absolutely in the green. Absolutely perfect. Uh, let's see. What else? Um, the pulse pump. After ripping out all of the... Trying to, trying to do electric fuel pump and having a return to release the pressure off it to knock it down to what theoretically the pulse pump is in PSI 1 to 1.5 arena and trying to knock the electric fuel pump down to the same with a return on a filter back to the tank yeah that had some success but not really good so electric fuel pump out of there come back to the pulse pump that comes on it why is it bad well it's not necessarily bad you can trade it out for you know one that you perceive is like um off of briggs and stratton but it probably comes from the same location somewhere in asia but the problem with this was if you can see that pipe right there and i've got a video on this too this is with a voiceover that pipe right there that vent pipe comes into the bottom of the carburetor and it uh, goes down, round, and into the block. And also, you see where that blue line is there? That's actually the feed off the normal pulse that's underneath the carburetor. Now, if you look, watch one of my other videos, you'll see this pipe was actually split from the factory underneath the cowling. And it, it winds through a really ridiculous path. They bent it, turned it. I don't know if there's more of them that are broken like that. But watch that video. Listen to the voiceover. That was that was, um, it was compelling. It's like, you know, when you've just got this pulse on this normal blue line, it would barely pump. The moment that that pipe was fixed, the big vent pipe was fixed, and, and you have a filter on. If you don't have a filter on you lose the pressure let's let's say you've got 10 pieces of pressure in the engine with that blue pipe it's the feed underneath the carb for the normal pulse and then you've got five uh, three for that and then seven coming off this big pipe if you take the carb if you take the filter off you lose those seven. The moment that you like put your finger over the hole, again, you can see it in the video, put your finger over the hole, this pulse, boom, straight up to, let's say our valuation of 10 from three. Um, huge difference. Um, so I, I keep talking, like I say, five years. This has now got to the point where fuel tank is down here. There's a, there's a, video on that too with a bulb I pump the bulb it feeds up through and in, into the diaphragm pump gets the fuel up to that point that alleviates that a huge amount of cranking if the tank is below the actual carburetor now that works real good I was a little suspicious about whether these little pumps could pull the uh, little ball valves in the in the squeeze inline hand bulb and it, it works fine and we'll start it again this hasn't been started since end of november we did all that tree work there's a video out on um but we'll see the we'll see the fuel get up to the to the filter and you can actually feel the bulb as you pump as you're pumping it air, 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 and all of a sudden it gets kind of hard and you know you filled the bowl so um so i would say that all of this ridiculous life cycle of trying to get this engine going if you do a couple of things you take it out the box you even the jets up put put normal pipes on it take that ridiculous exhaust off also on the real carburetor, there's two Welch plugs that sit above the idle screws. And if you take them off, the EPA don't want you to take them off, obviously. You take them off and just 
give it a little tiny bit more fuel it won't be quite as lean even after you've done both main jets down inside the engine the other carburetor obviously also has like idle jets like um, like on honda that are under a screw i would say based on my experience of drilling those out don't you will uh, get way too much fuel at uh, at idle they are really really fine but opening up the screws will give you some kind of control over the idle so change the main jet so they're the same drill them out the same or use like i say in the other video that the machine actually comes with a whole bunch all the way up to six thousand feet use one of the 105s or drill out one of the 93s or whatever just make them the same and then experiment straighten the pipes make sure you have the filter on establish that you are getting fuel before you do anything else make sure when it's cranking you are getting enough fuel up to your filter from your prime pump for it to run and fill the bowl and keep running so we're going to give this a shot anybody's got any questions this will be probably about the last video i'm going to do on this i'm up to like i don't know 25 there is a mass on this so it cranks a little slower so it takes a little tiny bit more time than like if it was just sitting on a bench because it's um cushman it's driving this uh big chunk of metal down here in the clutch base okay um i'm going to pump the i'm going to prime it there's one two see so fuel up in up in here And now the bulb's got hard, it's primed all the way up. I'm going to say the bowl is full at this point. The, um, the uh, electronic, um, electric shutoff has been removed. They take them out of everything. So you take that little tiny solenoid that shuts off the fuel, take that out. If, it's, if the engine is running perfectly well and balanced and there's, no, there's not too much fuel going into it, it'll shut off fine. It will not. But if it's barking and something and they've had to put that on, it's because they have it lean or something like that. So let's give it a shot and see if we can start it. set correctly with all that mass and it's slow, slower turning it takes a little while to get going but if this has got no mass on the um, output shaft let us start it like second time and I've been doing that action for four years like is it firing? Check in the pipes. I got a little tiny bit of pedal on it right now. Now remember the, the governor's removed from this. My foot's the governor. My foot's off. There we go. So that hasn't started, what are we, uh, February, um, that hasn't started since November. It's a relatively warm day today, but it's been really cold here.
That's it, guys. If you got any questions, give me a shout. Click like, subscribe. Bye.